Welcome to this video all about this stuff. So what is this stuff? Well basically what this is, is corrugated stainless steel tube which is classed as um, semi-rigid and it can be used on natural gas or LPG lines. So this video is going to take us through this kind of stuff where we can use it, when we can't use it and how we're going to use it. First thing is though I've already cut myself and I've only been playing with it for two minutes. So you've got to watch out for this because it's incredibly sharp. As usual on these videos, let's stop waffling and let's get on with it. Now, before we carry on, let's get the usual disclaimers out of the way. So this is not designed for the DIYer, it's designed for gas engineers. So remember, you must be gas safe registered before you can work on gas. And these videos are designed for trainee gas engineers not the DIYer. So that's the disclaimer out of the way. So let's carry on and get on with it now then. Now there are quite a few manufacturers of this stuff, but I'm going to be mainly looking at three versions of it, which are, this is gas tight. This is made by a company called GFS or Gas Flex Systems. And this is probably the most common one out there, which we call track pipe. So a lot of people call this track pipe, even though there are other manufacturers. It's a bit like calling a vacuum cleaner a hoover, because uh, track pipe were the first ones to bring it out in the UK. So Amiga Flex is an American company, and they've been going since 2000. And it was made for Japan because of the earthquakes. So they made it earthquake proof. So this is a semi-rigid gas pipe, which can flex. Let's have a closer look at this um, pipe and see what it actually is made up of. Now, we've had a couple of changes in the UK with our British standards. And British standard 7838 has uh, gone. And that actually is all about the manufacturing of this um, PCSST or pliable corrugated stainless steel tube to give it its full name in the UK. So this uh, British standard has been withdrawn so it's kind of caused a few problems for the manufacturers of this. So we're now referring to for the manufacturer of this with BSEN 15266. So uh, I don't know why they've changed it but there you go. So it has caused a few problems with the manufacturers. So, like I say, this is made of stainless steel. And to be precise, it's 1.4306 grade stainless steel pipe. Whatever that means. And it's also got covered with a polyethylene jacket, which is smoke and flame retardant. It's actually flame retardant up to 95 degrees C on our ambient temperature. And they tell me what happens is, in a fire, this doesn't melt, it just burns and falls off. It can, it is, um, some got some kind of fire properties. Now it comes in various sizes, ranging from 12 millimeters all the way up to 50 millimeters. And I've tried to work with the 50 mil of this. It's like trying to grapple with a python. It weighs an absolute ton and it's actually supplied on big drums. Now, one of the good things about this pipe, printed actually on the tube, is the length you've got left on the drum. So if I look at this, it actually says 22 meters. So it says on there that there were 22 meters left on the drum when this was cut off. So it tells you how long's left on the drum, which I think is a great idea. Stops you wasting the stuff. They also sell packs of this stuff, so you can buy a box of it, which you can buy in 15, 22, 28 and 32, I think. Yeah, that's what you can buy in the box, and it comes in the box. And you can buy them in 50, no, you can buy them in 5, 10 and 15 meters in length, so you don't have to buy a full drum. And it also comes with a couple of connectors and some tape, which we'll have a look at in a minute. So it is incredibly flexible when coming to buy this stuff. Now, just a little warning though, no mixing of products. Can't use Armour Flexi stuff on gas tight or gas tight stuff on GFS. No mixing fittings 
or pipe. No, 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 no. You have been warned. Now, let's just compare it to copper for its size. That's a piece of 15 and that's a piece of 15 trap pipe. So you can see the trap pipe is actually bigger than the 15. Okay, there's 22 copper, 22 trap pipe. Again, you can see the difference. And then we've got 28. So there's 28 pipe, uh, 28 trap pipe. Now, when you're clipping this trap pipe, you have to use the next size up clips. So for 12 mil, you would use 50 mil clips. For 15, you'd use 22. For 22, you use 28 clips. And for 28, you'd use 32 clips and so on. So you're always using the next size up clips for trap pipe because it needs to fit over the jacket. So when you're doing your clipping distances, you clip it as if you're clipping copper. It's the same distances. So uh, 1.5 uh, meters uh, horizontal, uh, 2 meters vertical for 15 mil, 2 meters horizontal, 2.5 vertical for uh, 22 mil, and so on. So you would clip it exactly the same as you would clip it for copper. One of the things you've got to be aware of though is it's nowhere near as rigid. So if you're doing long runs suspended from the ceiling where with copper you could use uh, once and rings and back plates and screw rod, with trap pipe really you wouldn't be using cable tray to support its full length. Just think if you're installing this you need to install it exactly the same way as you're installing copper pipe. Now you can see what I mean here by the trap pipe what's above me. So you can see here it's uh, not very well supported and it's a bit wibbly wobbly. But another thing what you can see here as well on the gas meters is if you're using trap pipe because it's not rigid pipe you have to do a 600 mil piece of pipe first before you connect on to the trap pipe. And you can also put your earth bonding within this 600 of the meter as well. Yes, you can use Munson rings in clips and stuff, but it does make your pipe look a little bit wibbly wobbly and very much not supported very well. If you like your pipes to look amazing, then just have a think about it. But again, this could be down to cost as well. So, um, yeah. Now, one of the pluses or big plus of trap pipe is you don't need any elbows because you can bend it like that. It's only a short piece, so it's come out as a tight bend. You need to have a nice radius bend. Okay, now according to BS7838, this pipe needs to be able to bend at a radius of 180 degrees around a cylinder 12 times. So being able to bend like this could also be its weakness because you don't want to keep bending it. Let's see how many times we can bend it 90 degrees before it snaps. So that's one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ooh, eleven, twelve. So, twelve times it snapped. So, that's the big problem with this is how weak it can be if you're flexing it continuously. So if you do, are forming a bend, don't keep bending it backwards and forwards because you're going to snap it. Now you've seen how weak it is going that way, but it is incredibly strong if you try to crush it. So I've got a vise here, so I'm just gonna put this in the vise and see if I can crush it. So you can see it's pretty damn circular there. Let's get it in the vise. And I am not a weak man. Uh, 
Ew. So I got red in the face. Besides getting a big bar on it, that's about it. So let's see if it's distorted it. It has a little bit, so you can see it's not quite oval, but it's not flattened it. Because they don't anneal this when they make it. If you anneal it, you make it incredibly soft. So it's great when it's going like that, but not when you're trying to go this way. So that shows you the strength the other way for it. Now you've just seen what's happened to the track pipe when I put it in the vise and it didn't crush. Well this is what's happened to gas tight and GFS. They've squashed in the vise. So the reason why these two products have squashed in the vise and they were very easy to squash as well is because they anneal the product to make it easier to bend. I haven't got big enough pieces to see how long these take to snap but uh, on that test, they're not as strong as trap pipe. Now let's have a really close look at the pipe and these auto flare fittings. Let's see how you put them together and uh, how they work. So let's have a look at that then. So you can see the pipe is actually coloured yellow orca to match any gas pipe in the UK. So it can be used in commercial situations without actually um, marking the pipe up because it's already colour coded for you. So this polyethylene um, outer cover also is UV protected as well as uh, ozone protected. So to actually make the connection on this pipe what we first of all we need to do is cut this polyethylene back but we're going to cut it in the dips so we need to go back five so one two three four five so we're going to cut it here, in that one there. So all we do is get our craft knife, commonly known as a Stanley knife, <laughs> even though it's not made by Stanley. So we just cut around, scoring the polyethylene. And then we need to just go down like that. And then this just breaks off. To where we've scored it. So this is important about these ridges now because this is our auto flare unit and what that does is it goes into the pipe there like that and this really strong tungsten steel I think it is here will actually make the flare joint inside. Now one of the things we can't do is put any jointing paste on here whatsoever no, 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 no. We obviously need to use the right paste on this thread because this is a BSP thread and you can see it's a taper thread so we can use it on gas. So uh, that needs to be taped but no tape on here whatsoever. So all this fitting is, is we have a back nut which needs to slide on. So the reason why we've left this now is because we need to get on to this ring here so all we use is these split rings and these are greased up to stay on. I've done this that many times with this, it's probably going to fall off. And now that is going to stop the nuts from coming off. So you won't be able to pull that nut off. So that now goes into there like that. And we tighten it up. Now we get two adjustable spanners now and we tighten, 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 tighten and it will go slack. And then you need to con uh, continue tightening it until it goes really tight. And there are torque settings to be able to torque this up. So for this fitting, we would actually have to torque it up, believe it or not, 57 newton meters or 42 foot pounds of torque. So that's how we would need to talk out how you judge that with two compression spanners, I don't know. But one thing I'll tell you you won't be able to do is over tighten this. So once we've tightened it up, what we need to do is we need to use some special tape to be able to protect our stainless steel trap pipe. 
So one thing we can't get on here is flux. Pretty much like your anaconda on your gas meter, there's no way we should be getting any flux on here because if we do, it's going to corrode it. So we need to protect this stainless steel by using the special tape from trap pipe. Okay, also if we get any nicks in here, we also need to use this tape as well. So let's look at this tape. So this is the tape we're going to be using. This is a special self-amalgamating silicone tape, specially made for the track pipe. So what we need to do is stretch ourselves a piece out, what we need, and get our craft knife and just cut it. So now what we can do is we're going to wrap it around the fitting. So I'm going to start here. So there's no glue on this. It just sticks to itself. So you need to kind of stretch it as well when you're going around. So it sticks to itself. And what we need to do is we need to cover 50% of the nut like this. So as we're going along, we're pulling it tight and it's sticking to itself. So we can go down here. And that's it. And if we leave that for about 10 minutes, it will go rock hard. Now, you never put this tape on until you've done a tightness test. Because if you have any leaks, <laughs> then you need to tighten that back up so that won't show any leaks up. The other thing we need to do is, if we're earth bonding now, we need to put our earth connection onto here. You never put your earth bonding onto the stainless steel at all. It's got to be on this nut here, either on the nut or on there to give you your earth. And also, if you're in a non-ventilated void, then the silicon tape should be left off at one end. Now, I would always leave this off at the meter end. So if there was a leak, it would then travel down here, come down to the meter end, and that's where there's less likelihood of it corroding, hopefully, as long as we keep our flux away from it. And it's uh, less likely to cause any problems if it does have a leak and the customer can smell it. So if you do have to put this in an unventilated void, then make sure you leave one end open so it allows the actual gas to escape. So this is that special self-amalgamating, so that means it sticks to itself, silicone tape for this job. Now this is the GFS pipe, which is slightly different than track pipe. So we cut it the same with the same pipe cutters. But this time we go back eight corrugations, cut round with the standard knife and remove the sleeve, the outer sleeve. Then you can see the fittings have got this little yellow know, clip on there. And what you do is you just push that on all the way on. Take that off and then tighten it up. Now inside, look at them inside, they are slightly different. You can see they have a rubber seal and clips on the inside. So that goes inside there, which goes inside the corrugation. That goes inside there and then and then that goes in there. So they're already pre-built up for you. And that's so they don't go too tight with it. And then you can just slide it on like that and tighten it up. But again, like track pipe, we then have to use the tape to go around the nut and the pipe to seal this after we have done our tightness test. So that's GFS. Now we've recently been to FEX, uh, Old Trafford plumbing exhibition, and we saw Tom from Gas Tight there. So instead of me going through this, why don't we let Tom from Gas Tight take us through it? Do you know what that is, Tom? That is a 32, it's a D40 male iron. So those bushes, that's, that's been pulled apart already, but yeah. we need to take, appreciate that, so we take them out and have a look. 
these dimples are aligned according to the corrugation. So once I put my fitting over the top of the jacket, these bushes are designed to grip the jacket and the pilot simultaneously. Push down, what we're looking to achieve is a rough 50-50 covering of jacket and pipe work. So I've got the pipe work protruding out there. All the match on the other side. There's a right and the wrong way for that then, isn't there? Well, yeah, I mean, but if I try and put it on the wrong way, physically will not push down the top of the jacket. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost fail safe. Tom needs that. <laughs> Anything else? So, as you probably noticed in there, there's a centre ring. Yeah. So that is, that is the, the source of the metal to metal mechanical seal. So this now guides over the top of those. You'll have a nice gap there between the bottom of the fitting and the bottom of the bush. As I bring the nut up and torque it up, that will now compress that pipe work into the fitting, creating a, a double seal. Cheers, pal. Now, if I just torque this up, I'll show you the finished product after this. As with any compression Where fitting, you get your yeah, it's under pressure. I am under pressure because I know you're filming, Derek. You <laughs> <laughs> see some professional in the fire. Now, what have I achieved there? Just put a bend in here as well for you. So we've got a multi point mechanical seal down the edge of the pipework. It's completely dry, metal to metal. No additional sealing compound or paste. But on the back there, we've got a patented jacket lock seal, which doesn't allow any foreign objects behind the back, back, back of the nut. But ultimately, it doesn't require any tape. You're amazed, aren't you, Tom? Absolutely amazed. It's a much more aesthetically pleasing finish to the product itself. Absolutely, the engineering process makes it always stay the same. Now, what I'll do is I'll take that apart, I'll show you what's going to happen. Hopefully, I've been overturned it, probably haven't. Hang on, time is busy. In theory, yes, you can, because it is a trouble with a compression fitting. I've been out to site two hours down the road to an electrical experiment. To, to create it, which people have been concerned about over time. <laughs> These fittings, as you'll probably realise, are completely reusable. So if you've made a hash of the cut or the hash of the seal, now that, that, that gap has now disappeared. Well, I'm going to set that up there, and you'll notice the seal there. So you've got a seal on the lower, the upper part of the corrugation. You haven't just got one seal. This is the most efficient termination of CSST. One thing you'll never do, Tom. Go on. Over tighten it. <laughs> we would never encourage, if, you've not, if you're, if you're create, putting a fitting back onto an existing cut, we would never, we'd encourage you to cut the pipe work again to create that flare. What do you think, Tom? Exactly. Decent. What's that about? Great So, say for example, you cut it and you haven't got a seal. Whatever reason. There's either two reasons for that. One is you use it really badly, or you have a tight paper on it. So, for example, if you cut it badly, we would encourage you to take the and recut it and try again. So, make sure you've got enough length on your pipe work to, uh, to do another cut. And you definitely would be cutting it badly, Tom. <laughs> At least once or twice. <laughs> That's gas tight. That is gas tight. Thank you, Jerry. Appreciate that. Good to see you again, mate. Good to see you too. <laughs> so, as you've seen, as we've been going along this video, you've seen that the trap pipe is installed like you would install copper. Except when it comes to burying this in screed. Now, the regulations say a gas pipe has to be protected from corrosion and movement if it is installed in screed. And also, if it goes through some kind of void or some kind of boxing in, then depending on the size of that void or boxing in, it will require ventilation. Now what Track Pipe have done is, they've brought out this newish product, it's been around a little while now, and it's called Track Pipe CC. And it's basically the same Track Pipe with another jacket on the outside, which is then protecting it from corrosion and movement. 
So this can go into a void without ventilating. Now, just a word of warning, even though the pipe can be buried in screed or in your front garden, your back garden, the fittings can't. The fittings must be looked at as if they are a compression fitting. So just bear that in mind also. Now GFS also do an integrated containment sleeve, but I haven't got a piece of that here. This is just the single sleeve stuff. And they call it PMAX. And gas type also do it. They call it a P2, gas type P2, which I do have a piece of it here. So all three manufacturers I've got here do the integral containment sleeve so it can go in screed, like I say, and so it can go in unventilated voids. Now, if you have the single sleeved coated stainless steel pipe, then you'll need a containment sleeve. And this is a containment sleeve. So if a gas pipe is passing through a cavity wall or a wall, or through a floor and straight through, then it will require a containment sleeve. And this is the containment sleeve. This is pretty good for when you're doing um, timber frame houses as well. When you've got brick on the outside and a timber frame on the other, you can use this as your pipe sleeve. So your trap pipe would slide through your containment sleeve. Now apologies to these two manufacturers for keep calling it track pipe. But that was my look on uh, corrugated stainless steel gas pipe. Hope you've liked the video. Catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.